Hi everyone, Mike Holmes here. This is the Know Your Reno podcast, where listeners will hear from experts from Improve Canada. Whether you're a building, designing, renovating, or learning, this podcast is for you. Improve Canada is a fantastic home improvement and education center. You can speak to multiple showrooms about your project needs. Custom furniture, decor, landscaping, general contracting. Get your tiles from one showroom and your countertops from another. You can really mix and match to have the run of your dreams. Everything you need under one roof. Hi, my name is Olga and I'll be the host for this week's episode. Today we have Anthony from Land Design Canada talking to us a little bit about your next landscape project. Perfect. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I was actually very excited to come here today. Um, Again, I'm Anthony Zambri from uh, Land Design Canada. I'm the owner and also lead designer in the company. Uh, We create uh, 3D renderings uh, all over the world and uh, all year round uh, for for any sort of custom landscape, uh, custom pools, and also custom stru- structures. So I know a landscape design necessarily is not the first thing that uh, homeowners think of when taking on a landscaping project. I know we don't really think about the fact that we need a 3D rendering or even a 2D visualization, but I know that's one of the most important steps actually in planning your next project. Could you could you tell us a little bit of why you want to have that in place before you actually start hiring and picking out materials? Sure. Um, the most important thing is the protection between the contractor and the homeowner. Um, the 3D and also 2D uh, renderings of the landscape design is a visual contract to protect both parties. Now, I could ask or you could have me over and and say, Anthony, I want to do a landscape renovation and I only want to spend or do 200 square feet of, uh, of my backyard. But how you do that 200 square feet is important and to the homeowner and also the spacing of the project. So what would you say are the key benefits to homeowners to have a design in place before they start choosing who their contractor is going to be for the project? Well, one of the things it's important is that when they have a design in place and when they send it to a contractor, the contractor will have all the information in front of them so more than likely 99 percent of the time they'll be able to get that quote back a lot faster than if they were just to call them and say come over and give me an idea and a, and a quote so it's right. a lot faster um now this is one of the main benefits to having the design in place before picking a contractor now let's just say any old homeowner again that doesn't view this podcast uh and and most of the time this is what happens is that they'll call three contractors to come in okay now the homeowner will tell each and one of them, hey, I want to get something like this done. Now, the problem is, is that each contractor in their way of viewing what the client wants will give them three different ideas and also three different quotes. Right. So now it's almost impossible for the homeowner to actually compare uh, all these quotes to the same level, to the exact same job um, and, and, and be priced out the same. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's like comparing apples to oranges to grapes. It's impossible. Right. So when they have a design in place, now the homeowner is able to compare the quotes appropriately, 100%. Sure. And the greatest part about the landscape design, um, having it ready, is not only that now you know it's a very understanding process to what the homeowner wants, but also at the same time, now the client has a piece of document that they can go out and tender that that project. So all of a sudden, now you'll see that every single contractor most likely will be between 5% of each other. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the greatest part, is that now you'll be able to see if a contractor is way lower or yeah. way higher. Now, that's a red flag because any sort of reputable company that's doing these projects will be very close to each other. Let's call it 5%. Mm-hmm. Now, the c- contractors that are way higher, way lower, one may be lower is he may not know what he's doing or he might have missed something, which is you don't want to take advantage of the contractors if they're a lot lower. One, because they might be saying, oh, hey, I didn't see this on the drawing and it may be an issue later on in the project. One, if they're really high, maybe they're taking advantage. Mm-hmm. So now the homeowner has the advantage, but when they're doing their project. Yeah. So basically having a design done before is like having the answers before you take the test. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's the homeowner now having the ability to take control of their project and not letting contractors do exactly what they want or or what the homeowner doesn't want. Right. 
So you've mentioned earlier that a uh, design in place actually protects both the homeowner and the contractor. How does it protect the contractor in this particular case? Well, the contractor, um, and it happens before in personal experience, is that I've worked for many companies um, before I, I started up Land Design Canada. Uh, even when I was a lot younger, let's just say when I was first building pools, again, I was in my teens. Uh, so I've been in this industry for a while. I was very lucky. You don't look a day over 18. <laughs> <laughs> I was very lucky to work for uh, these great companies when I was first starting out. And it didn't matter how beautiful the job came out. If there was not a design in place, there was always... Uh, a, a negotiation or, or skepticism of what was supposed to be done and you know what the homeowner was expecting no matter how beautiful it came out and the thing about it was that i can't tell you exactly what was said at that time but i can tell you exactly how each the contractor and the homeowner felt when they didn't know exactly what they were expecting right so at the end of the day it protects both parties because the contractor could be doing above what they thought what they were supposed to do. And the homeowner may think otherwise. They may say, oh, I was expecting this or I was expecting that. So the design protects the contractor just as much as the homeowner. Right. Yeah, I think it's so important when you're going into a, such a big project, right, to know exactly what to expect and to have all of the possible protections in place. Because the last thing you want to do is change your plan halfway through or figure out that something that you thought was going to work is actually not going to work, delaying your project, adding on extra costs. Mm -hmm. I'm Mike Holmes. I've been trying to educate people on how to build it right, how to prioritize your renovations, and how to pick products and materials that will last. We love speaking to the Improve experts about how they are supporting the skilled trades. This is important to us, and it takes a whole community to stand behind the effort. Visit ImproveCanada.com to start your home improvement project the right way. Subscribe to the Know Your Rental podcast to learn more about how to renovate it right. And if you do see me at Improve Canada, please come by and say hi. Hope you enjoy the podcast and keep making it right. So now let's move it in a little bit into the actual sort of meat and potatoes of the landscaping industry, right? Because when we think of adding value to our home, oftentimes we think of a kitchen or a bath, right? That adds value to our house. But landscaping actually is also a huge value add-on. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a little bit about why you think that landscaping is actually a solid investment if you're looking to add value maybe before reselling or just in general? Uh, landscaping is definitely a solid investment. Um, years ago, Even Money Magazine came out with, uh, with a little article that said that any well-designed property for landscaping could bring you back a total of 7 to 15% increase to your total property. Wow. And especially with the prices now, how fast they're rising, that 7 to 15 is going to be exponential when you count for inflation. Absolutely. So for me uh, and, and our crew, we design properties all over the world. And sometimes the projects are like a million, a million five. Imagine if the homeowner were to get 7 to even 15% back on top of their investment very quickly. It's 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 fantastic. Now, also, if you look at the, the greater Toronto area, most of the properties... Um, their lot size is bigger than the actual size of the home. Right. So, which in fact, you have to think of it this way. Sometimes people renovate their whole house and that's great, but look how much extra room they have on the outside. Now they have outdoor living spaces. Mm -hmm. um, outdoor living spaces are sometimes one of the cheapest re uh, renovations that you could possibly do and also bring back the highest investment. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I think of like landscape projects or landscape renovations, Personally, you know, when I get my house, that's going to have a lot of land, hopefully. I don't know. We're in Toronto, so that may never happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think about potentially putting in a pool, right? Because I feel like a lot of homeowners think about a pool as one of the major upgrades they could do to our home. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what the process, what is the process for thinking about putting in a pool or planning for a pool, right? Because that's a very invasive procedure to your lot, to your landscape. Mm -hmm. How would you plan for that in advance? Uh, plan early is number <laughs> one. Uh, so a lot of people don't think about all the, the little decisions that they may have to make when deciding to go ahead with the pool design or a pool project, uh, whether it's doing uh, the documents to 
submit to the municipalities or maybe it's material selection. And even in today's market, um, you know, it's not unseen now where materials are here today and gone tomorrow. And then even if it's a larger job, let's just say you needed a thousand square feet, you might not be able to get that from even one supplier. You might have to shop around to three different suppliers and have them all together. This is this is the things that we need to pay attention to and homeowners need to pay attention to. I know lots of contractors in the, the season that just passed that uh, they would start a project and, you know, the contractor and the homeowner had an agreement that if they couldn't get the, the material in time, that they would have to move on and come back later. Yeah, I definitely think that, especially in a pandemic, we're faced with so many challenges that, we're not an issue two years ago, right? It was something that was we didn't even think of. It was an afterthought, right? Or the material is going to be here. Well, we didn't have the major supply chain issues like we do today. So would you say that homeowners should be adding on extra time to their timeline to anticipate for things like this? Absolutely. Um, even just picking the right contractor just from the start takes time. Uh, the, you know, the people who do the work for you takes time. Picking the right material takes time. Submitting all the documents to the municipalities takes time. They, it, everything uh, requires more than what you think. And it's like any project. We'll always budget for double what you think you're going to spend, but also at the same time, double how much time you think that it will take. But so to add on to that, what are some of the other challenges that consumers may face in the, the market planning for now we're in 2022 and a lot of people in February are going to be planning for a landscape project? What are some of the challenges that you anticipate this season specifically? Well, it's funny enough, but uh, I think a lot of people um, have been wanting to get their landscape done. Um, it's becoming more and more popular only because, you know, of course, of the pandemic and shutdowns and stuff like that. People are now more and more appreciating their backyards, uh, which is great. But at the same time, the the amount of really good contractors to hire is becoming lower and lower. Some of these contractors, they're now booked to 2023. So the, if you wait uh, too long, not only will supply chains uh, and materials go down, but also maybe the particular contractor that you may want to hire may not be available. And it's landscaping is an art, like, like lots of different things. It's a skill of a trade. It's understanding how to do things properly. Um, there may be a contractor, and again, I'm going to consider him an artist, that he may have that exact theme that you want to go for, whether it's modern or contemporary, he may be totally booked and mm -hmm. you may just have to wait. Yeah. So just like me, I'm an artist, a uh, designer, and uh, we're lucky enough that we design lots of different styles. That's mm -hmm. what we specialize in, again, all over the world, uh, that we can match the customer's look of what they want. But to have a contractor to perform and to do the exact look that the customer wants, that's what's important. So you mentioned uh, that you work in a couple of styles that you've designed for a couple of styles. Could you actually tell us a little bit about the styles? Because I feel like a lot of people don't consider that there are different styles of landscaping. Like I don't know what how to tell modern apart from traditional or whatnot. For sure. Yeah, uh, we specialize in uh, doing any sort of style for any sort of customer all over the world, whether it be an English garden, Mediterranean, modern, contemporary, traditional. Uh, we actually specialize in mixing all of these up. Like it all depends on the house. We like to complement whatever the style of the house is to what maybe the landscape may be. Um, potentially, obviously, if we were to do a house on Muskoka, it would have a certain look. If we were to do a house in Texas uh, that was super modern, it's always nice to kind of complement it. And kind of complementing it will enhance the landscape design of it yeah. and also the value of the home. So now in 2022, and you have so much experience in landscape design, what do you think people are gravitating more towards? What are you seeing more and more of in your work? Honestly, to me, I've seen a lot more modern um, being implemented into people's designs, uh, whether it be fire bowls, uh, fire water bowls, uh, water walls, um, jets. It, it's a lot more of the features that are now um, being implemented. Of course, you're going to have like the, the minimalistic look uh, we've got artificial grass in between pavers. Uh, we got sunken fire uh, fire pits that are also very popular. We, we just finished one in Texas with a big piece of glass you can see underneath inside the pool. Um, stuff like this. Um, custom structures is always super popular. Um, of course, the outdoor kitchens. But overall, it's the, the more modern look that uh, everybody wants. 
Yeah, and I guess the features are kind of similar to the rest of the house where you have very sleek lines, sharp angles, right? Very minimalistic materials. Is that, does that translate to landscape design as well? Absolutely. Um, for instance, we did a Mediterranean look in uh, Jupiter, Florida, and uh, it looks stunning. Of course, it was a curved look, but uh, that's what happens with you know, the type of look, usually yeah. it dictates the pool as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more Mediterranean, you got a little bit more rocks involved and waterfalls is different. But then if you go modern, we got super sharp lines, like you said, and uh, the different types of water features uh, dictates that as well. So you mentioned that you do designs all over the world. Do you see in different regions, people are looking for different things? Is it, is there such thing as universal landscape design? I would, I wouldn't know. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously the warmer climates in the Southern states, um, they can have a little bit more uh, capabilities of doing things. And uh, honestly, a lot of those styles from the South, let's say Miami, Texas, LA, a lot of these different styles are now moving into, let's say, say Toronto and the GTA uh, we're now learning how to adapt certain different types of materials to make that look possible. Um, I'm every day I'm I'm <laughs> pressing against the contractors that work with me uh, to do certain things. They say yes, Anthony, it's very difficult. Yes, but we can do it. And because it may be one of the first times that they actually do it, it is now becoming a trend because all they have to do is see their neighbor have it, and then the next thing that they have it. And, Anthony, I heard you did this. Can you please do it at my house? So a lot of the, the cool things that are happening inside um, the states, the southern areas, the warmer areas are now coming back here. So you'll see before that, for instance, um, a lot of fiberglass pools are popular here. Vinyl pools are popular mm -hmm. here. But what's becoming more popular here, even though it's super expensive, even twice or even three times more expensive, the concrete pools, the gunite pools um, are coming here. People are spending the money on that look. Yeah. Absolutely. And what are some of the challenges of taking, you mentioned that, you know, you do a lot of work in Texas and obviously the lot, the lots, the lot size is so much bigger than what we usually have in Toronto, especially now with people gravitating more towards the urban areas and places getting smaller. And, you know, your lot is basically just the house. How do you translate kind of those grander features into something like a design in Toronto? Well, you know, whether it's myself or any other skilled designer, we make it work. That's <laughs> I love that answer. Everyone gives that answer. We make it work. Yeah, we, yeah it's true. We make it work. Um, I mean, some of the best projects that I've ever worked on were on smaller scale uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it, it's making sure that every single inch of the project is actually maximized to the potential that the client is wanting and needing based on their list and it's my job as a designer to make everything fit but also make sure that it's uh, within budget right of course and are you seeing any challenges of the climate changes if you're taking something like a southern design and translating it to something like that's a colder climate is there a challenge with that? Is there any deterrence specifically that you like, no way we can't do that? Yeah, there is also uh, lots of things that we can't do. But at the same time, as manufacturers are starting to pay more attention to what homeowners are wanting, and again, they want that warmer look, um, they're starting to come up with materials that we can now be able to use here. So basically in this day and age, anything's possible? Anything is possible <laughs> with money. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important distinction. Uh, so what would the typical process kind of from, you know, the design aspect, but also the budgeting aspect, what would that look like for a homeowner? Well, if anybody wanted to start a landscape design, the first thing that would have to happen is that we'd have to have a discovery call. So that that discovery call is a discussion between me and the potential clients talking about their needs and wants. And again, versus their budget, where they live, because uh, that plays an important role and uh, when they want it done. So that's the first thing. And then after we've now determined what maybe the price will be for the design or how much it might be, just as an, a ballpark, what the project may cost. If the uh, homeowner is now uh, accepting all this, then we get to go towards the design. The design is then created, maybe it will take two to three weeks, depending on the size of the project. Um, after um, after the design is done, we'll send them a teaser. They'll look at it. We'll have a, a nice Zoom call. We'll present. They'll say, Anthony, I love this. I love this. I love this. I don't like that. We'll change it. We make it perfect. And then they have that landscape design that they can give to the potential contractors to get the project started. So are there any kind of, I know the big question that a lot of people ask is, is, is the budgeting? How much, how much money do I even need, right? That's everyone's favorite question. Is there a ballpark where you can figure out 
for especially maybe a newer homeowner that doesn't know how what these projects are valued at and what they're going to cost is there like a ballpark figure where you're like you should set aside at least this much to encompass everything that you may want to do well front entrances could be small to large um it all depends on square footage a lot of guys uh will, will tell them you know, based on the square footage, this is how much it would be. But to my experience, uh, it actually comes all the way down to elevation. So if you're going to need three to four steps, it actually those steps cost much more than just the regular interlock. OK, if I want to flagstone the front of my house, OK, how much is it for a pool? Again, for a pool, I would probably put aside at least 100K. Um, and that's just with everything done, whether it's with the design, it's with the municipalities, getting all the permits done, uh, having the contractor come in, the lines are done, uh, closing, starting up the pool, uh, having some interlock around it. So I would say at least for a pool, have a hundred K for a front entrance. It's hard to tell you. Yeah. So it definitely depends on a lot of factors, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any sort of permits that people have to consider that are going to add on extra expenses and an extra timeline? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, again, another reason why it's important to have a landscape design already in place is because you're going to have to go through that process regardless. You're going to have to submit documentation to these municipalities and say, this is what I want to do. Those days where you would scratch on uh, on a napkin and hand it to the to the city and say, I'm kind of wanting to do something like this, those days are over. <laughs> you you have to have surveys done. You have to have elevations proposed. You have to show that uh, you're not messing around with uh, the drainage of the backyards and you're going to flood your neighbor. Things like this are in place to protect people. These documents, again, the landscape design is here to protect you. So regardless, you're going to have to go through the process. So you might as well add in all of the features and really get a feel for what the final project is going to look like, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, touching back to what we were speaking about before, um, generally a landscape design will cost you uh, one to 3% of the entire project. Not only are you gonna possibly save um, with the tendering of the project and showing different contractors and getting that the savings because you're comparing apples to apples, you might save 5% right there. Again, the landscape design pays for itself, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you are now tailored to exactly what you want and you now expect other people to follow. Right. And so that also would go with what kind of contractor you would pick, right? Because contractors, mm -hmm. like you said, they're artists, they have different styles. Could you touch a little bit about how to pick a contractor? Because I know a lot of people wouldn't even know where to start with that. Well, having a contractor that uh, you particularly like, it, 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 it's an interview process. And the things that I would definitely say is look at their past project that they've done. Um, talk to people that have gone through the process with these contractors, talk to them, uh, see how their experiences was, uh, were they honest, uh, were they on time, did they deliver what they, they say they were going to do. Um, these are all important to picking a contractor. Oh, so you're like a one-stop shop, right? Like a person could come to you, get the design done, get a contractor recommendation, and you can also talk them through the process of approaching the city with the plans and everything, right, I'm assuming? Yeah, that's correct. So the first step is all, always design and prepare. So that's number one. Then because we have a team all over the world, doesn't matter where it is, we, we deal with people, um, projects have been done, they're in progress. So we can always kind of... Uh, navigate the client to who you know we've dealt with in the past and at least then they have something to work off of um, ultimately it's the client's um, choice to who they choose and again as long as it's a credible company and they do their work properly and the design gets created the way that they want it and also the way we created it then i'm happy what made you think of going into landscape design specifically because i don't i meet a whole lot of landscapers and people that you know, sell and install pools and whatnot, but I don't meet a whole lot of people that just do the design aspect. What what made you want to get into that specifically? Uh, the reason why I thought uh, in putting my time towards a landscape design was because I felt that the industry, especially in the greater Toronto area, a lot of the guys were just used to doing cookie cutter jobs. Um, very simple, uh, nothing was really pushing the limit. I felt that there was so much more possibilities to what people could have done at their home. So a lot of the times, uh, the contractor would never express the homeowner's personality through their outside landscape. And to me, I thought that was always uh, a shame. And I always felt that there was a need to always improve um, where we live and how we showcase our lives. Now, what's happening is a lot of people are getting a little bit more uh, adventurous 
with their outside landscaping, which is fantastic, whether it be with custom pools, structures, or just even their front yard. And it all starts again from a landscape design. So I feel that even in the industry now, whether or not we're talking about worldwide or we're talking about uh, the GTA, I feel that designers are now being expressed a little bit more than they were before or being more expressive. I feel like now, especially in the GTA, designers are now being more valued because we are expressing the client's wants and needs a little bit more. It's very fun for me because I'm actually now pushing my limits, pushing the contractor's limits, and also now creating this beautiful outside landscape for the client. Are you experiencing any sort of challenges with pushing limits? Like, are you seeing pushback from either your clients or I know the contractors are probably giving you a little bit of pushback? But what are some of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day basis? On a daily basis, all my contractors would tell me, Anthony, I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, I have to push the boundaries all the time. It's just in my personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I always tell people I live once, I'm in my 30s, I could be doing this till I'm 60 or 70. But within that time of my career, I want to say that I pushed every job to its limit. And I want to be recognized. I want to I want to showcase that every client, uh, we showcase their personality. We over delivered on what they ever thought was possible, whether it's uh, a redo on their pool using the same same curve uh, pool that they never thought was attractive. Now, all of a sudden, we changed it up. We used different pavers, we used different stones. Uh, we added different water features, fire features. And now all of a sudden, it's their best spot in their house. I love that. And I think that's so important now that people are taking uh, less vacations because, you know, we don't want to fly right now. So the option is to just hang out in your backyard all summer long. So I definitely think that's, that's a very valuable, uh, service that you're providing to people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, I love to touch up on it, but, uh, the landscape and just being around uh, green spaces actually improves people's mental health. It's been, uh, it's been recognized many years ago, but I think now people more than ever, you know, when they go for a walk to a park, uh, they feel better. Mm-hmm. Whenever they spend a little bit more time outside, they feel better. Having an outdoor backyard um, that is customized to what you want um, and being able to enjoy the way oasis that uh, we've designed will improve mental health. But also at the same time, um, this goes back uh, to actually one of the first designs I ever did uh, coming out of school. Uh, It actually landed in a magazine, which was great. Uh, But the thing about it was that the family, uh, they had a few sons, they had a few daughters. And this one particular son was, I'm going to say, troubled. And um, what happened was that after the landscape design and the project was finished, uh, it was really touching to me because the homeowner came up and said, Anthony, you have no idea what this means to me. Uh, You did a great job. But not only that, but now that our family is able to connect a lot better we spend our nights um at the fireplace hanging out uh we we spend more time we enjoy each other's company and uh one of my sons uh, is not getting in trouble as much that's fantastic and i definitely think that ties into that concept of biophilia that we've been seeing more and more in the industry that people are recognizing just how important green spaces are to their mental wellness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I tell people all the time, sometimes when you go take a vacation or you go to different cities, uh, it's not always the inside of what people recognize or or they tell you a story of. It's usually what's the outside. So let's just say, for example, you went to New York. Oh, I went to Central Park. That's a a lot of the times people talk about that. It's a lot of the outside things that people talk about. And people are are now understanding and becoming a little more wise to, hey, you know what? The outside landscape, the outside experience is sometimes even greater than what's on the inside. That's why we're all moving into cabins in the woods, right? (laughs) That's uh, Hey, listen, if I could, I would. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel you. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, If anybody wants to reach out to Anthony, we will have all of the links in the description below. You can come to Improve Canada and book an appointment with him and talk to him a little bit about your next landscape project. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Know Your Reno. If you would like to get in touch with today's speaker or any of our large number of showrooms at Improve Canada, please check the description for a link to book an appointment with us at Canada's largest home improvement center. Don't forget to keep in touch with us on our socials and we will see you next week for another value-packed episode to make your next home renovation a breeze.